Welcome to our daily hovers. I'm Mika Namakan, and today you're playing for the game Raiko, which is a sequel to the game Coco that we just played. Where it's been years since those events, and Saichi is about to discover that not quite everything is as over as he believes. Several years later. As I stood waiting for the train to arrive at my destination, I watched the lights of the city fade under the prism of the glass. <sighs> I yawned slightly from exhaustion. I'm quite late. I hope Coco won't get mad at me for being so late. It had been several years since I came to this city in search of a new life. Something that undoubtedly changed me in every way. I left my hometown behind to live here, where I also found something very important. A woman to love, and a place to call home. Although I still had a certain fear of demi-humans, I was slowly getting used to it. I couldn't live in a place for people, and I couldn't live in a place exclusively for monsters. We had to live in this limbo, something marginal, for the comfort of what is now my family. We finally arrived. The train stopped and opened its doors. The carriage was almost empty, and apparently only I got off at this stop. I got off the train, somewhat disorientated by the long journey. My search for a new job had once again failed to bear fruit. Time to go home, I guess. I sighed again as I began to walk with my head down. I went into the back streets to take a shortcut. In these areas, it was hard to tell whether the person in front of you was a real person or not. Fortunately, everything here was relatively safer than usual. The semi-humans who lived or worked in these areas are beings who want to adapt to a more human lifestyle. Or, as in my case, people who want and need to live with them. Obviously. I must not let my guard down and... Saichi! A voice startled me. A shiver of alertness ran down my spine. I turned. Oh! I sighed with relief. Don't give me those scares again, Pascal! I... Sorry. Pascal was almost my only friend. We met at one of the jobs I had some time ago. We were both fired because he, due to his appearance, frightened certain customers. They threatened to report him for being dangerous and aggression. I came to his defense. I had the opportunity to know him in depth, and I knew he would never do anything like that. I decided to leave with him. I trusted his innocence and did not want to leave him for his own. Thanks to this, he avoided major problems. But obviously, I was out of work. Are you... back from looking for a job? Right. How did... how did it go? Well... <laughs> I laughed nervously. I don't think they will call me. Don't... get discouraged. He slapped my back with a violent gesture. In a clumsy attempt to boost my morale. I won't. I know I'll soon find a job again. What about you, Pascal? I... I'm still looking too. I'm sure we'll both find something. We walked together along the street until he stopped. You're going... home, aren't you? Yeah, Coco must be waiting for me. I... I'll go down this other street. I still... I have things to do. See you. Saichi. Of course, take care, Pascal. You know what? I love him already. Pascal, you're my favorite. We both raised our hands in a friendly gesture of farewell. He is precious. He was not a very expressive being, but he was very friendly and loyal. Also, totally harmless. For my part, I continued on my way home. The streets were not too crowded, though at this time of night, it was reasonable. 
I finally arrived home. I rang the doorbell and waited patiently for Coco to open the door. Wait, am I not trusted with my own key? I mean, valid, I, I, I'm very clumsy and I lose everything. You yeah, probably should trust me with a key. Coco appeared in front of me, and at the same time, her elegant scent flooded my nose. Saichi, you are back. Seeing that smile on her face completely wiped away all my tiredness. Come on in, honey. The feeling of being home again was very comforting. Saichi, sweetie. She looked worried. What's wrong, Coco? Is everything all right? You see, it's about Raiko. Raiko? How could I forget her? She was our precious daughter. The result of our love and, moreover, the joy of the house. She used to run around while playing and getting into mischief due to her semi-human form inherited from Coco. Several times she stretched out her long, sharp fingers to scare me, as she was always amused by my reaction. What happened to her? You know how she's been a bit different for a few days. Maybe... She may be at a crucial age for monsters like us. Neither you nor Raiko are monsters. But you know that the identity of a human and of a half-human are not the same. As a half-human begins to grow, it goes through some stages of confusion. Could you go and talk to her? Of course, don't worry. I'll find out what's wrong with her. Thank you, darling. Wait, wouldn't it be better if Coco talks to her? I mean, you can relate. Or are you forgetting I'm just a pesky human? You certainly are a sweetheart. I hung up my coat and went to her room. Everything was in darkness. Raiko? Are you sleeping? I mean, probably not now, because I did say that a little loud. She did not reply. I walked carefully to her bed. Raiko? I stroked what I sensed was her body over the sheets to check that she was there. I'll let you rest. But you and I need to talk tomorrow, okay? We can't keep worrying Mum. I let her sleep under the covers and left the room trying not to make too much noise. Wait, do we think she snuck out? Do we think she wasn't there? Because when we didn't check, it could very easily have just been pillows under the cover. Where? She's asleep. She couldn't even say anything. Coco let out a worried sigh. Listen, Coco. Yes? Okay. Well, do you know what? That's what worries her so much. Why are you so worried about Raiko? I think it's obvious, honey. Her status as a monster. She is not completely human. And she is not completely like me either. If she is going through this phase of confusion and doubt, who knows what may become of our little girl? You shouldn't worry so much. If it's normal for everyone, then we should just accept it and support her. The problem is that you're suffering so much for this too. You can't keep losing sleep like this. Oh, you do look very tired now that you've mentioned it. And what do you propose to do? How about you and me going somewhere tomorrow? Somewhere? You mean a date? Yeah, you can call it that. Do you want to go out with me? But... I can call my friend Pascal to stay here and look after her while we're away. Even so... Come on. You need to distract yourself and stop worrying so much about Raiko. Let's go out and have fun, just the two of us. It'll be just a while and she won't be alone. If there's anything, Pascal can let us know. Everything will be fine. Okay, let's go somewhere. But where can we go? That doesn't matter. Let's just go out and you'll see how much fun we'll have. Alright, that's what we'll do. She came up to me and kissed me on the cheek. You must have some dinner now. 
I'm sure you're hungry, aren't you? A little bit, yeah. Then come, let's have dinner and tell me how your day went. We had a quiet dinner. Coco's laugh flooded the room at times. And then she guiltily shut up in case it woke Rico up. After that, we both went to sleep. The new day arrived. I called Pascal to stay with Rico for the whole time we were away. He readily agreed, or so I thought, as he wasn't very expressive. Rico, my little daughter, she had been distracted and absent for some time. She lost some of her giggly personality as she grew up. According to Coco, it is a very normal stage in the life of a half-human where they come into conflict with their own blood, monster instinct or human reason. Both were right now in her mind battling for control, or so I imagined, of course. I had never seen anything like this up close in the past. Coco, because of this, was extremely worried all the time. She didn't want to leave her alone so she could keep an eye on her. But, as was beginning to be visible in her, she was very stressed and anxious about it. Now, fortunately, it was a nice day. Even if it's just a few hours, I'm going to make her enjoy my company and relax. Come on, let's go! Be careful, Saichi. Don't fall. This is you who has to be careful to not lose your balance. We decided to take a small urban train to one of the nearby parks to spend the afternoon there. Saichi! I offered her the seat in front of me. Tell me, are you comfortable? Yes, I am. But do you think... She'll be fine. Don't think about Raiko anymore. Just focus on enjoying yourself, okay? I don't think that was a good thing for us to say. She kept silent as a way of agreeing with me. She sat next to me while I stood holding on to one of the support bars. Are you looking forward to that walk already, honey? Of course. You know I love going with you. I know, but I'd like to hear it from you. You know... It's been many years since we met again. I still remember how you trembled with terror in that tunnel. She gave a contained, soft chuckle. You never seem to forget that kind of detail, do you? How could I forget it? If it's about you, dear. She reached out her hand and with her slender fingertips took mine. For you, it may or may not have been fate. But for me, meeting you certainly was. I know that this new life you gave me was only possible because of you. In the end, you did manage to save this monster's heart. I've already told you that you're not a monster. I gave her a little smack on the forehead as punishment. Don't be so cruel to me. It's what I am. You are not a monster. You are my wife now. And that makes me extremely happy, Saichi. I was just thinking that you and I have changed a bit since then, don't you think? Now that you mention it, yeah, you're right. When I first met Coco, she seemed to be much colder and more distrustful. She found it difficult to express her feelings. Now, on the other hand, she looks more cheerful than in those days. The train began to slow down. Here we are, ready. I held out my hand to help her up. Let's go. Coco's sincere smile was brighter than the afternoon sun on this special day. Hand in hand, we got off the train together. We walked while browsing the shop windows until we reached the park. She seemed to be doing her best to relax with me. As we both placed our feet on the gravel road, we felt the cool breeze caress our faces. 
Coco's hair waved like a flag, proclaiming the elegance and beauty of her kind. She was always a very serious woman, but at the same time, extremely caring and kind. She always cared about me, and also about our daughter. We were definitely a very close family and important to her. Hey, honey, since this is a date, why don't we get to know each other a bit better? Know each other better? Yeah, for example. Hmm, let me think. I know, your friend Pascal. What do you think of him? I heard he assaulted someone. Is that true? He's not dangerous or anything, is he? Shouldn't that have been a question you asked me before we left our daughter with him? Okay, no, you know what? I Pascal is adorable and we have full confidence in him. I have complete trust in him. If I didn't, I wouldn't have left Ryko with him. He may not be very expressive, but he is reliable. When he had that problem at work, I didn't doubt him for a second. I think... I think leaving him was the best thing I could have done to prove his innocence. If you speak so kindly of your friend, it says a lot about how kind-hearted you have always been to us. With you? Yeah, like when you and I first met. The first time we met. I remember. I didn't know it before. Rather, I didn't think I would ever meet that girl again. For me, it ended up as a vague memory that sometimes showed up in my dreams. But... Fate brought us together again, didn't it? Well, I mean, fate, you kind of stalked me from afar. Either, 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 or. One of the two. Come on, ask me something now. What would you like to ask? Okay, tell me about uh, your friendships. What about more about your past? Your wish right now? So I think what's gonna would we know is Vaiku, right? Do you have a wish right now? If you could have one wish, what would it be? <laughs> that question. <laughs> she laughed gently. With a voice as beautiful as if it were the song of a happy bird. Guess. I know Coco loves flowers, and she also loves to cook. Hmm. You would ask for a bouquet of beautiful flowers. I mean, if she loves to cook, would she really want it right now, though? A bouquet of flowers. <laughs> she laughed again. Don't be silly, Saichi. You know what I'd really ask for. That you and I would be together forever, of course. Okay, oh, we can ask her more. Okay, tell me about your friendships. After we moved here, did you make any friendships yourself? Me? She grimaced in disbelief at my question. No, I don't get along very well with anyone. And I don't need it either. People and monsters alike all make empty promises. I prefer to focus on you and Vico. Because with you two, I can make sure that you will never leave my side. Never? Wait, you don't know how our daughter's gonna be growing up and going off on her own, right? That, that's kind of what daughters do. So, having my little home with you, I'm fine. Even so, perhaps... In fact, you should listen to me, honey. Pascal may be trustworthy, but there is no guarantee that another person or entity will not take advantage of your innocence. That's why you should only look at me. Don't take your eyes off me or Raiko, because after all, we only have each other, don't we, darling? I'm concerned. It, she is definitely trying to isolate us. There's this obsession. Okay. Tell me more about your past, Coco. What specifically would you like to know? Okay, do you remember your- Ooh, that's an interesting one. Do you remember your mother? You have rarely told me about your past. Do you remember anything about your mother? My mother? I was too young to remember it exactly. I know we had the same hair and the same condition with our hands. Except for me, her eyes were so much more yellow and brighter than mine. What about your father? 
I never met him. I don't even know his name. I can only guess that he was some human and later abandoned my mother. Maybe when he'd found out that she was a half-human. Maybe. I'm not so different from her. Why'd you say so? Because, as if I had inherited it, I was always distrustful of other beings. I always think that, in some way, they are thinking of doing harm. But I don't say that about you, of course. You are my helpless little human. I must protect you and take good care of you. She hugged me in surprise, almost with glee. Am I a pet to her? This does not seem healthy. A rare reaction from her. Okay, what's got you worried? Is there anything besides Riker that worries you? I wouldn't want you to keep quiet about something that would make you feel bad. No. Oh, so I think. Why'd you ask, honey? You've been looking a bit tired for weeks, and I don't want you to be like that. So if there's anything I can do for you, I... It's all right, honey. When Maiko feels better, I'm sure I'll feel more relaxed. You know, she's our little girl. I can't just ignore her. You're right. I'm worried about her too. When we get home, we'll have a little chat. Honey, I'm a little tired. Is it okay if we sit down for a while? Sure, no problem. Let's go to the fountain. In the center of the park, there was a large fountain. Drops of cold water cooled the atmosphere around it. What do you say we sit here? Sounds perfect to me, darling. It's a nice day, don't you think? Of course, my dear. I had a great time with you today. You were right. I should distract myself a bit, Saiji. See? I told you that you needed a little break, and I'm glad I could do something for you. And I'm very grateful to you too, honey. But not only for this. I also thank you for everything you have given me since we met, even though I lied to you. You stood by me and forgave me. You are capable of forgiving a lie and disregarding past mistakes. You don't have to thank me, Coco. I'm the first one who enjoys being with you. Are you serious? Of course. You're getting sweeter and sweeter, eh? But it's getting late. Yeah, you're right. Should we go back now? As you wish, darling. Oh, we could stay a little longer. But you know what? We're, she's asked to go home. We can go home now. It's getting dark. We'd better go now. I don't want Pascal to get bored waiting for us. Also... Our little girl is waiting for us, isn't she? Yes, that's it. Okay, let's go now. I got up from my seat and held out my hand to Coco. Ready for the way back? If it's with you, I'm ready for anything. She took my hand and stood up, standing at the same height as me. Then she looked me in the eye without letting go. What is going on? I just remembered. Raiko. I'm sure she'll be fine. Don't worry. As soon as we get home, I'll talk to her. Trust me. Still, it worries me. We continue walking to the exit of the park. Suddenly, she stopped me to ask in a serious tone. Saichi, darling. Yes, Coco? Before we go, I would like to ask you one last question. Sure, tell me. Which one? In the hypothetical case that you had to choose who lives or dies, who would you choose? Me or Vico? What kind of question is that? I... I couldn't choose something like that. It would be impossible. What if you had to? I mean, imagine you can only save one of us. In that case... I guess I would have to think about it and make the decision at the time. If I think about it, 
I wouldn't be able to give an answer because you are both very important to me. Yes, I understand. Just curious, nothing more. Wait, what? what's going to happen if it turns out that um, when the half monster e reaches the certain age, the parent dies and that's why she, we never met her mother and she doesn't know her? Curious. Are you sure? Sure. Let's go back home. On the way back, Coco barely spoke. Her countenance became more serious, almost nostalgic. What was that question about? Why did she care so much about Raiko? Was there something I was missing and didn't realise? Be that as it may, the issue was now as different as it was similar. Home at last. Yeah, I'm already tired from all that walking. Let's ring the doorbell. Coco touched the button and we waited in silence for Pascal to open the door. Do none of us have keys? What would happen if no one was home? We all had to leave at the same time. Sergi, Coco, I'm glad. See you. Did you have a good time? Of course. How can I not when I have the best human with me? I'm glad. How was Raiko behaved in her absence? No, she did not want to leave her room. I see. Thank you for doing this favour, Pascal. No, you're welcome. I... I have to go now. Thank you for everything, Pascal. See you later. I owe you one. Pascal nodded his big body and left silently. Saichi, honey. I'll go take a shower while you go check on her, okay? All right. Enjoy your shower, my dear. She came up to me to give me a fleeting kiss on the cheek and then left. Time to tackle this issue once and for all. I approached the door to her room, but although the light was on, there was no noise. Raiko, may I come in? When I came in, she was standing there, staring at the door. Hello, Dad. Hi, honey. Did you have fun with Pascal? Yes. Mum told me that you were feeling a bit... bad. Do you want to talk to me about what's going on with you? She looked down as if thinking about her answer. Yes. I sat on the edge of the bed while she looked at me. So, what do you feel? Don't be afraid, I'm your father. You can tell me anything, okay? In that case... She grabbed me with her little hand, as if she was afraid. For several days now, I... I feel strange. I feel as if a part of me is certainly whispering. It whispered to you? Yes. It tells me things. What kinds of things, Raiko? I don't know. I often don't understand it, and sometimes I do. They confuse me and make me feel tired. And the only way I can get them to leave me alone is to sleep. Is that why you stay locked in your room? Yeah, because I don't want to do anything wrong. Nothing bad? What do you mean? On TV, they say we're very dangerous to people. And I don't want to hurt Dad. If all monsters are evil, I don't want to be the same. I don't want to be left alone either. I don't want Dad to leave me. Raiko, that's not true. Not all demi-humans are bad or dangerous. Haven't you seen Mum? She would never hurt another person. Well, not, well I mean, except if uh, we threaten to leave her, in which case she kills the neighbour. But still, no, nope, never hurt another person. But what if she were to hurt you too? Oh yeah, I forgot she actually kills me in that scenario. Oops. I... 
I hugged her and caressed her back. Uh, it'll be fine, Riker. You're not a monster and neither is Mom. And what if I scare the others? It won't be like that. Mom and I will always support you. Will you never leave me? Never. Promise? I promise. Will you always be with me? Will we always be together? Always. It's a promise. After several days, Ryko smiled again. But you have to promise me that the next time you are worried about this, you must talk to us about it. Promise. I'll go and talk to Mum. And you, miss, you must go to bed now. But I want to talk more with Dad. Tomorrow, I'll be the one staying with you so you can wait, right? Well, I'll sleep. That's my girl. Before I walked out the door, Ryko interrupted me. Dad? What's wrong, Connie? Can I ask you something? Sure. Tell me what you want to know. You... You love Mama very much, don't you? Of course I love her. Why? And... And who do you love more? Mom or Ryko? Why are both of you trying to get me to choose one or the other? What is going on? This kind of question again. Why did both ask me almost the same thing? You're both equally important to me. I see. Good night, Dad. See you tomorrow, Ryko. I turned off the light and returned to the main room. Why did both Coco and Ryko ask me the same question? For some reason, I am becoming increasingly worried about this sudden interest. I'll go and ask Coco. She is the one who can shed most light right now. It looked like she wasn't out of the shower yet, so I went to the bathroom. Coco? Are you still in the shower? Yes, darling. What's wrong? What did Ryko say to you? You see, because of the noise of the water, I moved closer to the shower glass so that I could talk to her better. She says she hears a voice inside her. A voice? Yeah, although she doesn't understand what it whispers, she seems a bit... scared of hurting us and of becoming a dangerous monster. That's more or less what I imagined would happen to her. When I was her age, I felt the same way too. That voice is the wild, elemental instinct we have. Those who succumb to it end up detached from morality or empathy. Many of us learn to control that side of our being. You could say it's a bit like puberty in a human adolescent, couldn't you? Yeah, well I can imagine what you mean by that. Has she said anything else? Well, should I mention the earlier question to Coco? I'm thinking yes, because both of you are being weird. Before I left, Ryko asked me something. What did she ask you, darling? She asked me the same question as you before coming back. About who I loved more, her or you. Really? What did you say to her? I simply told her that I could not choose, that you are both important to me. I see. Don't worry about it. It was just a fluke. It's normal for such a little girl to ask questions, isn't it? Yeah, you may be right, but... Anyway, it doesn't matter. I am feeling a bit tired. Do you mind if I go to sleep now? Of course not. Go ahead. I won't be much longer. I'll be with you in a few minutes. All right. Enjoy your shower, and I'll see you tomorrow. I rolled my eyes hard, like an eraser trying to make something disappear. Why? Why did I dream that? And I... afraid? After dressing, I went to the main living room. Listen to me carefully, Ryko. You'll stay with Dad today, but... You have to behave yourself, got it? Yes. 
finish your breakfast and listen to everything I tell you. Yes. Coco was finishing fixing her hair while seeming to scold her. Darling, I'll go now. I'll see you later, okay? She kissed me again on the cheek. And you behave yourself. Yes. See you later, Saichi. Good morning, Raiko. Did you sleep well? Mum told me you were sick. She seemed to be very quiet today. You've had breakfast already, haven't you? Yes. Do you want to sit on the sofa and watch a bit of TV? Okay. She went quietly to the sofa. Meanwhile, I took an apple to put something in my stomach. Raiko looked at me for time to time with curiosity, as if she wanted to tell me something but didn't have the courage to do so. Today we again report the murder of more people at the hands of monsters in the slums. With these, the numbers increases too. Tell me, Raiko, is something wrong? No. We urge the exercise caution and report any hostile activity to the authorities specialised in... Why have we not changed the channel? I mean, we, our daughter's already told us she doesn't... She's concerned about being a murderous monster. Why do we have this news channel on? That's just talking about murderous monsters. <laughs> it's a little bit insensitive. She looked at me again. Are you sure? Maybe I should talk to her about something first. But what? Okay. Wait, okay, get to know her better. There we go. Wait, we don't know what she likes to do. She's our daughter, isn't she? You know what? What do you like to do? Tell me, Raiko. What things do you like? Things I like? Yeah, like sweets, animals. Tell me what you like the most in the world. In the world? She looked at me. Being with Dad. And what else do you like? Anything else? Well, I like cats. Would you like to have one? Yeah. And what would you call a cat? Hmm. I would call her Loon. That's a nice name, honey. When Mum comes back, we'll tell her. Okay. Play with her, there we go. Hey, Raiko, how about playing a game? Play? Yeah, I always like to play with Daddy. What would you like to play? Hide and seek. Decided then. On your feet because I'm going to start counting. Now. Vico's nervous and excited expression became visible. As soon as she heard my warning, she ran from the cover with a grin from ear to ear. One. Two. I could hear her little footsteps scurrying around the house as she looked for a place to hide. And ten! You'd better be hiding because I'm going to find you. I must search, but where do I start? Okay, search in the bedroom, there we go. I will try the bedroom. Are you here? I bent down to look under the bed, but I didn't see her. Maybe... Gotcha! I looked inside the cupboards, but she wasn't there either. Then I'll try somewhere else. Okay, so there's the bathroom. I'll try the bathroom. And this might be a bad idea, but I don't think there's anywhere to really hide in the bathroom. I found you! No, she's not here. I could have sworn that... Well, never mind. Search her room. She could be in her room. It's a good place to hide. I went quietly, intending to surprise her. The lights were off and the blinds were drawn. It was hard to see anything in the darkness. But, in the darkness, I could make out a shadow. Raiko's childish silhouette, together with her long, spider-sharp fingers, chilled my blood almost beyond help. As if I was seeing something worthy of a nightmare, I froze. I knew it was her. I knew it was my daughter, yet 
I was afraid. Raiko? Dad! You found me! Is something wrong, Dad? You look pale and scared. I I'm fine. It's just... Never mind. Come on, get out of there. At this way, you're going to scare your poor father to death. She walked towards the living room silent. Well, wouldn't you say we play something else? Are you angry, Dad? Angry? Of course not. Why'd you say that? Because I saw your face, paralyzed with fear when you saw me. Do I scare you? No, you don't scare me, Raiko. Don't think anything like that. It's just that I... You know, at this point, we, we, it might be better just to say we're scared of the dark or something. Save her feelings. I was just afraid of the dark, that's all. There we go! I share the same last brain cell with this guy. Yeah, that's why I was scared. Really? Absolutely true. Besides, I promised you that I would never be afraid of you. If it was that, then it's okay, I guess. For a moment, I thought you were afraid of me, but it makes me happy to know that Dad would never run away. She hugged me tightly around the torso, due to her still short stature. See? You have nothing to fear either, Raiko. I got down on my knees to be on the same level as her. You have to grow up and be a confident girl. You must not be little or deny who you are. You may have half human blood in you, and some may point fingers at you for it. But that doesn't matter. We must not let ourselves be carried away by fear. I am sure that whoever gives himself the opportunity to meet you will not regret it. Nevertheless, you have the best of mom and the best of dad, don't you think? <laughs> Maybe. Dad's a scaredy cat a lot of the time, though. She returned to her smiling countenance. But that doesn't matter. I can be very brave if I put my mind to it. Really? When have you ever been brave? Um... Yeah, that's actually a good time to be brave. I said it doesn't matter. You are scared. <laughs> she was still laughing. And that was reassuring to know that despite what she is going through, she could still laugh like she always did, and it cheered me up. Let's teasing, miss. Or you'll see when mum comes back. Okay, okay. After that little game, Raiko and I spent the day talking. We went shopping and went for a little walk. Everything seemed to be like an ordinary day. When we got home, Coco had not yet returned from work. So together, we made lunch amidst some more jokes and games. As with Coco, I wanted Raiko to forget everything that was bothering her for a day and focus on just being a girl. And then, Hiromi runs after him while I... We were startled by the sound of the door opening. Saichi! Darling, I'm back! Coco came over and along with her warm embrace, kissed me on the lips. Did you both have a good time today? Good. For some reason, Raiko's countenance became totally serious and annoyed. I see. What about you, darling? Me? Good, good. We've been playing and having fun all day. That's good. Raiko and I made lunch, so we're all going to eat together. We sat around the table. Everything was going well until... What? Raiko, are you feeling sick again? Since Coco arrived, she has had that awkward expression on her face again. I'm fine. If something happens, you must tell us. Or we won't be able to help you. Are you worried about anything? What's going on between them? 
Yes. She gripped the fort tightly. I am worried for Daddy. For me? Yeah, because I fed Mum's diary and I know you could hurt him. Me? I'd never hurt. You're lying. It's a lie. All monsters lie to do what they want to humans. That's why they hate us. Vico! I won't let you do anything bad to Daddy because he promised to stay by my side forever. She ran off to lock herself in her room. Vico! How can you say something like that? So, she has read my old diary. This girl. Do you want me to talk to her again later? No. I'll do it. Don't worry about it, okay, darling? She rose slightly from her chair and kissed me on the forehead. I... I'm going to lie down for a while, okay? You are well. Yeah, you don't have to worry about me now. Well, I'll be around if you need me. She gently caressed my hand and let me go. Well, I mean, if... Raiko is red in the diary to make her concerned. Shouldn't we be concerned about what's written in the diary? I mean, I'm guessing it's something more than what we read in Coco, right? This whole Raiko thing was beginning to distress me for some reason. I felt that, despite being something supposedly normal and common, it was beginning to escalate into something more serious. And not just my own daughter's confusion or Coco's nervousness. Also... For my own part, after all this time, I... I was afraid again. Fear for the people I now loved, who became my family. Fear of monsters. Night fell on our roof, just as the darkness was overcasting my heart. I was still in bed, lying down, but I could hear Coco and Raiko arguing for a long time. I didn't want to pry, but I didn't seem to go too well. I wasn't entirely sure what was going on, or maybe I didn't want to. Memories that once frightened me at first assaulted my mind when I was careless. They made me tense and alert, even though I knew I was in no danger. Right? Coco and I had dinner. Raiko stayed in her room and didn't want to go out. But before the day was over, I wanted to check on her one more time. Dad? Honey? What happened with Mom? Did you two keep arguing? Don't you listen to me? I am sure she will do something. Do what? I don't know. Maybe kill you or hurt you. I'm sure of it. I've already told you, Raiko. Mom wouldn't do something like that ever. And how do you know that? How can you be so sure? Because I trust Mom. And you should do the same. Have you read her diary? No. It says that, that she killed people. A lot of people who got in her way. But that was before everything changed. That's why... It's not true. Haven't you noticed? You lost your job because of her. What are you talking about? Uncle Pascal didn't do anything wrong. It was Mom. It was she who followed you one day and attacked that client. Out of jealousy towards her. She wounded her and then threatened to kill her if she told anything. So Pascal was blamed for her injuries. That doesn't make sense. Coco couldn't do something like that. Why don't you believe me? To be fair, honestly, everything we know about Coco, that she could have easily have done something like that. She definitely wants us isolated. She also tells in her diary how her mother was just as impulsive. Out of jealousy, she wanted to kill her father, which is why she was abandoned. Everything she told you is a lie. And now, now she plans to do the same with me. 
to separate you from my side. Stop it. I refuse to believe something like that is impossible. Coco couldn't do something so, so... Inhuman? Is what she is. A monster, just like me. Saichi. Coco's voice on the other side of the door interrupted us. Shall we go to bed now? Yeah, give me a second. Alright, don't take too long. Raiko, you have to give up these crazy theories about Mom. And stop believing these lies. I'm sure you're making a mistake with the... Tonight. Tonight, I'm sure she'll do something. She told me. Because she's had enough of me. Of pretending to love me when I'm reality. She sees me as a threat. Threat for what? I can't say. But she wants to... She wants to take you away from me. Even though we had promised to stay together forever. I... No. I can't let something like this ever happen. That's why. Trust me, Dad. Trust me, just this once, and you will see that I am right. Before she can do anything, come to my room tonight, and I will show you the truth. I sighed in sheer despair at what she was telling me. Coco had always lied to me? How could that be true? All these years? So many moments together, thinking I know her every day. It's impossible. Saichi! I'm coming, sorry. Will you come to my room later? If you show me what you have to show me, will you be more relaxed? Yeah, because then you can see that I'm right. Then I'll prove you wrong, Missy. You don't need to be afraid of Mom or of me. Come on, lie down and chill out, okay? Yeah. She lay down on the bed and looked at me with sad look in her eyes. Good night, Dad. Rest. We'll talk about it. Until then, you must listen to me. Good night, Raiko. Honestly, I can see this being Coco's nature. I, I'm with the kid on this one. I left her room and went to the bedroom where Coco was waiting for me. I'm sorry it took so long, but... But... Did Raiko say something to you? You look very worried. Almost like when... No. Just a girl's imagination, I guess. Saichi, honey. She sat on the edge of the bed and looked at me with the same sad expression as Raiko. I know what she's going through. And it's time for us to be firm with her. If not, we could lose her. Lose her? Yes. In her body run my blood and your blood. You know that. She is at a point of deciding the weight of the scales. If she is tempted to go by her instinct alone, we could lose her. Maybe she could decide to stop being human forever, because she will never be able to control herself again. That's why we must be firm, Saichi. If she has said something to you, just ignore her. She cannot do anything dangerous while it's under this roof and with us here. If you say so, I guess you're right. Just stay calm, okay? I'll keep an eye on her tonight, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Come on, wipe that panicked expression of your face. She pinched my cheek teasingly. I like you like that, Saichi. That's why I can't lose you. But... But nothing. Put on your pyjamas and go to sleep. That's an order. Coco, I think it'd be better if... Didn't you hear me? She gave me a menacing stare, staring right at me. Okay, okay. You win or go to sleep now. That's my innocent Chisaichi. She put her arms around me and kissed me slowly on the lips. Maybe tomorrow this will all be over. So trust me. And wait for me. Never let me out of your sight, darling. She caressed my cheek. Thanks, Coco. Inevitably, night came on. 
The tiredness of my eyelids grew heavier and heavier, but I couldn't sleep. There was something wrong, very wrong. All this, I was beginning to feel as if I'd been through this all before. Yes. It's as if everything is repeating itself all over again. This fear of the unknown once again. Except this time, it came from my own daughter. Again, I had to decide who to trust. My own daughter or my wife? Why was I doubting them in the first place? Haven't I learned anything in all the time I've lived here? Did Coco really attack so many people? Could she really do anything? So cruel? No, I don't know. But I cannot stand here mobilized by fear or indecision. I must clarify everything to get it over with. For the last time, as I did on that occasion. That's why I have to trust. You know what? Kid first, there we go, we're gonna trust Raiko. I've known Coco for many years, and yet, I doubt. I doubt her. Maybe my own instinct is warning me the same as Raiko's. She said she could show me the truth. Even though I shouldn't take something like this seriously, but I want to know. I rubbed my eyes and got out of bed, ready to talk to Raiko. I didn't care what Coco had said at the time. I really wanted to know what evidence my own daughter had to say that about her mother. So I went to her room. Coco wasn't around. Coco? I didn't hear any noise in the kitchen. Maybe she was in the bathroom, so I didn't give it a thought. I approached the door of her room and knocked quietly. Raiko, are you awake? I'm coming in. Raiko! As I walked, my feet stepped in a puddle on the ground. Water? I bent down to touch it and look at it in the dim light of the window. No, this isn't water. It's blood. I told you to stay away from her. Have you just killed my daughter? I warned you, but I knew you couldn't listen to me. Coco? If you had trusted me from the beginning, none of this would have happened. But it's alright. I searched desperately for Raiko, but my eyes stopped on the figure laying dismembered at her feet. You! What's wrong, honey? Don't panic. It's all right, see? How do you want me to be okay? You killed Raiko! I screamed at the top of my lungs until I tore my throat out. Why? Why are you shouting at me? I didn't do anything wrong. I was just protecting you. She was going to do something to you. I'm sure. She was going to kill you. That's why. That's why. I... I'm going to call the police. You've lost control, Coco. You are no longer... Human? I never was. But you... You can no longer escape from here. With sharp fingers, she wrapped her fingers around me as if we were in a death trap. We were brought together by fate, Saichi. I know you might hate me for what I've done, but I know you'll understand. I do everything for you. Everything. She covered my mouth to prevent me from calling for help or screaming. You're going to be an obedient little human now, aren't you? You're going to stay here with me. Quietly, like in the old days. Remember, we are going to be very very happy, especially now that nothing and no one will bother us. Coco End Wait, so if I chose to trust Coco, do you think my daughter would live? Do you think there's any option for my daughter to live? I'm not convinced there is. 
Unless by picking the Coco end, Raikou does kill Coco. The days passed. Coco kept me tied up every time I misbehaved. She only took a rag out of my mouth every time I needed to eat something. I don't know how many days passed, but I do remember being there next to my own daughter's corpse for longer than any sane human could have endured. Luckily, Pascal noticed my absence and came to visit me. Coco threw him out several times, but he kept insisting. On one occasion, he did not come alone. He brought the relevant authorities with him to check that I was okay. They tried to take her away, but she escaped. The last thing I remembered was seeing her gaze on me as she said, Fate will bring us together again. Well, there you have it. Pascal for the MVP. Oh, I told you he was the most wholesome character. Oh, I do adore him so much. I love you, Pascal. Okay, let's do some alternate routes as well. So what was we asked about Vico? Do you know if she has said anything about what is wrong with her? No, nothing. She simply remains silent most of the time and goes to her room. She doesn't want to talk to me, just to ask about you. That's why I thought maybe it would be best if you talk to her. In that case, I'll talk to her tomorrow. Don't hesitate. But what worries me now is you. You still can't sleep well, can you? We must do something with you too, Coco. Ah, oh, I don't want to do this route, but okay, we're going to be not sure about Pascal. To be honest with you, I know he's trying to be someone good and kind. But you can never fully trust a half-human, can you? I mean... You know. You mean the wild instinct? Yeah, that's right. Often underneath the gentle appearance, there is perhaps a completely bloodthirsty instinct or... I swallowed uncomfortably. Don't worry, honey. I know what you're trying to say and it doesn't bother me. I feel the same way. That's why I wanted to know what you think of him. But if you say he is trying to integrate with people's society, then we should give him a ch little chance. Okay, so we're gonna ask why was meeting us so important? Why was meeting me so important to you? Why? Because of what and it happened. I remembered the tiredness I carried on my back, the tears welling up in my eyes, as well as the sadness I had inside me. I was alone, dazed, and had no one, nothing. And despite my appearance, you were not afraid of me. You just walked up to me and took my hand. These hands that would scare many others, but you were different. Because that, and much more, is why you have always been for me the most beautiful and serendipitous. What would happen if we stayed a little longer, actually? We'd better stay here for a few more minutes, is that okay? Of course. In that case, if there is nothing you want to talk about or ask, I have a proposal. What'd you propose? A game. You'll have to guess what I'm thinking. But if that's only if you don't have anything in mind, of course. Hmm. You know what? Should I ask us and girls or should we play together? You know what? Let's play. Let's do what you say. Let's play. Okay. It's simple. I'll just give you a few clues and you can try to guess what I'm thinking. Coco put her finger to her lips as she thought. Hmm, got it. Here goes. At the window I am a lady. On the balcony I am a madame. At the table a courtesan. And in the field a farmer. What am I? Uh... Wait, Mivoku? When do I am a lady and both me I am madam? Well I mean I kinda wanna put Moroku just for the kicks of it. Do you know what we're doing it? Moroku? What kind of answer is that? She pinched my cheek. I am the water. 
S sorry I couldn't think of anything else all right let's try again I was born in an instant and I will last for eternity what am I um. okay well it's obviously gonna be memory right because instantly born and lasting forever your memory almost the correct answer was what I feel for you that is a cop out Coco that is a cheating that wasn't even an option I was given it was more than clear silly Saichi it was clear to you who could have known that me of course that's why I said you should guess anyway shall we go now honey sure let's go I got up from my seat and held out my hand to Coco. Okay, this time we're got, not going to mention her question. I mean, I think if we don't mention it, maybe things won't get as tense between those two as quickly. No, she hasn't said anything else. But she did promise to let me know of anything like that. Well, that's a bit of a relief. She seems to trust you, and that's great. You're certainly becoming a great father, Saichi. I don't think so. You've always been just as modest, honey. Don't be afraid of that. I'm feeling a bit tired. Do you mind if I go to sleep now? Oh, wait, this is one where we have the vision about her killing Miroku, right? I wonder if we went to see Psycho at this point. Not, not Psycho. I wonder if we go to see Raiko at this point. I'll go and see if Raiko has woken up too. Raiko? She's not here either. Where have they both gone? I went back to the corridor. Okay, so what was if we talk about her status? Raiko! Yes? Could you tell me what is troubling you? How can I help you? I don't... I don't know. I... I am a bit worried. Tell me what's keeping you like this. I'm afraid Mum will hurt you. Why'd you say that? The other day, while I was with Mum, she left me alone. In her room, I found something. A book. And what I read was about you, Dad. It said that Mum did very bad things. What if Mum hurt you? I... I couldn't allow something like that. Hey, hey, Raiko. That was a long, long time ago. Mum is not like that now, okay? But, on TV, they say that monsters usually eat people. Mum is not a monster, and neither are you, Raiko. You need to stop thinking that, okay? But... Trust me, okay? Mum would never do anything bad. Okay. I wonder if that's going to change anything now we know about the diary earlier than in the original one. There was an awkward silence. So that's what Raiko thinks of her mother? Okay, so now we're down to these two options again. So of course we're going to have to trust Coco. It is impossible for Coco to be such a cruel monster. I'm sure Raiko has made all that up because she has confused things. It is true that Coco has a diary, but she could never do such a thing. I refuse to believe that. But why would Raiko go to such lengths? Is it all the fault of this phase she is going through? I rubbed my eyes and got out of bed. I was going to find Coco, so we could all talk together. Coco? She wasn't next to me in bed, nor could I hear anything in the kitchen. And the bathroom light was off, so... She must be in Raiko's room. I went there with some trepidation in my heart. Coco? Raiko? Are you there? Why are you in the dark? And when I put my foot on the inside of the room, something wet me. What is... Hello? No one answered me, but as my eyes adjusted to the dim light. What? Wait, so you're telling me that what I trust is always going to be the one that dies? 
Vico! Dad, did you wake up? One of you. The floor was soaked with blood. A long trail ran along the floor to her fingertips. She was sitting, almost as if she had lost the strength in her legs, over a pool of blood. And, and, I stammered in terror. And, C Coco? Mom, she's dead. I you? Yes, I killed her. You've got that panicked look on your face again. Did I do something wrong? Why? I collapsed because of the grotesque image my eyes were seeing. My own daughter. She had killed her mother. My wife. Why? I told you and you wouldn't listen to me. She was going to separate us. She was going to hurt you. So I had to be quicker. Raiko, you've become a... Monster? I may be, but I'll always be your daughter, won't I? Right? She stood up and looked at me. You still love me, don't you? I slowly tried to get up. Daddy? I got out of there and ran without looking back. Coco was dead. And that being, she was no longer my daughter. She was a murderer. I quickly went for help. Doctors, police, anything that could come as soon as possible. I also called Pascal for help. He was the only one I could turn to. After several minutes, he came running into the middle of the street while I was crying in sheer terror. Saichi, what happened? Raiko has killed Coco. Now she's dead. She's dead. You must calm down. Everything can. No, I haven't just lost Coco. I've lost my daughter too. She's become a real monster and I now. He grabbed me by both shoulders and spoke to me firmly. Let's go to get Coco. Maybe she's still alive. No, how can she still be alive? Come on, now. He grabbed my arm and pulled me across the street while the rest of the people looked on in astonishment. When we returned home, Vico was gone, as was Coco's body. When the authorities arrived, they deduced from the blood loss that she could have not survived. As for my daughter, she was put on a long list of wanted creatures a list that no one had any faith in ever working. I had lost everything, absolutely everything. This time, I could do nothing to prevent it. This time, I couldn't save anyone's heart or my own. Okay, I wasn't actually expecting. Riker to kill Coco at any point. I thought Riker was just going to die every single boot. Huh. After that night, I wandered through the streets in silence, pushing my luck as if unconsciously seeking to meet her again. As if I wanted to be saved again, but I knew I would never see her again. At least, not Coco. Okay, so now we're onto our last bit of the game. And for that, we need the codes. So let's go in. Do you have any codes or keywords? I do. Do you want to write a secret code? I do. And my secret code. My secret code is Rebecca. I still need to get around to playing your game. I will do that. Dear Rebecca. Wow, what are you doing here? Who are you? I guess if you've been able to deduce this, it's because you've heard of me, right? Am I famous out there? Well, that doesn't matter now. I'm glad to know that you still remember me. Because, if you've forgotten, I reside in a small part of you, right in your subconscious. 
So even if you don't know it, I can dwell here or anywhere in your mind. This time is special, but it certainly won't be the last. I'm sure another time we'll meet again, you and I. Maybe in here, or maybe in there. Because I'm still not complete. I keep needing something. That I can't figure out what it is, or how to get it. Do you know what it could be? Why don't you speak? Ah, uh, that's right. It's you who is not trapped here with me. Hmm, maybe. You gave me another great idea. But I have to go and prepare it first, like in the old days. That's why I'll say goodbye with a little riddle, to see if you're worthy of going one step further. Are you ready? It's only four letters or numbers, but it was the combination that allowed me to be free. That's all, for now. Goodbye, Mika. I know my name! Okay. Well, I'm g so the combination that the needs of the three is going to be in that game, right? So I'm going to save that one to last because I don't know it off the top of my head. But first, how about we try... Miroku. You were a big character in Coco, so maybe you're here. Several years later. Wait, did Moroku survive, do you think? The first time I came to this city, I had a big accident. I lost myself in the labyrinths of its streets and got involved in the danger of its monsters. Oh, this is Sai Chi's story, still. I ran into a half-human who undoubtedly brought misfortune upon me. She saved me, at a great price I never imagined. She kidnapped me in her flat for almost two full days. But luckily, someone came to my aid. Her name was Miroku, a semi-human girl who, in spite of everything, helped me get out of that hall. Eventually, I lost contact with her after that incident. I didn't hear from her. Until today. Saichi? It's Saichi, isn't it? It's you. <laughs> it's been a long time. Yes, it's definitely you. A girl's voice stopped me in my tracks. You are... Mimoku. Have you forgotten about me? Of course not. It's just that you're... Different? Yeah, your hair. Oh, a little change of look wouldn't hurt, would it? To my surprise, of all places I met her once again. You still look stunning. What a thing to say. <laughs> what are you doing here? Don't tell me you got lost again. Do you want another crazy woman like Coco to kidnap you again? Of course not. This time, I know where I am, and where I'm going. Oh, really? Show me, then. She came to my side, and in a quick gesture, grabbed my arm as if we were a very close couple. Let's go. I want to see where you're going, and while we're catching up. It's a great and seamless plan. Okay, okay. But don't stick so much. You give me heat. Hey, that's not true. Right? We walked along the whole length of the tourist promenade. The sun was beginning to set, tinting the whole sky with a very melancholic purple. Tell me, Saichi, what did you do after you left? I found a job somewhere else, and I was there for a while. Oh, wait, is this following on from if we'd chosen to leave Coco behind, maybe? But now I'm free, and I came looking for another place to stay. I see. Surely you did something, didn't you? As long as I've known you, you're quite clumsy. Not at all. I just didn't feel right there, that's all. Hmm? She looked at me with a look of suspicion on her face. It's true. What about you? What's happened since we lost contact? I left that dangerous neighbourhood behind. To be honest with you, 
although at times it was exciting to wander the streets because of the variety of creatures, I didn't feel good there either. So I moved to this part of town. It's much more expensive, but it's quieter, you know? I'm sure if you got lost here, no one would try to kidnap you. If no one would do it, how are you supposed to rescue me? Don't be silly. You can't joke about something this serious. Did I ever tell you? Where my little sister lives. They say there's a very dangerous monster in that forest. Oh, wait. Oh, I know who your little sister is, right? The one from Void of Desires. Oh, I can't remember her name, but I know who you mean. But my brave little sister locked her up. Can you believe it? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Well, no. These eyes have seen a lot of things since I was a kid. It's a joke. Because I have a lot of eyes. Get it? Yeah, yeah, I get it. Come on. Don't make such a long face. Laugh with me. Even though I said that, every time I looked at her, it made me uncomfortable. Because I didn't know where to fix my gaze. If I looked into her eyes for a long time, I could see how they... Somehow, they were looking into me. It was hard to describe until it happens to you. But it certainly wasn't pleasant. Oh, we have to go down this other street. Where are you going? I go where the wind takes me. In this case, the wind marks me right in the wake of your footsteps. So let's go. As she continued to hold on to my arm, we walked down a narrower, busier street. And, to my surprise, Miroku hooked me tighter. I told you not to stick so much. I know. It's just that... Is that... Well, I'm not very good with people. Although she always seemed so carefree and outgoing, that she would say this, no doubt, surprised me. Now you're shy? It's not that. Well, it's just that you've always had a lot of confidence in me. I know. But that's because you're different. Different? Different in what? That is a secret. Okay, so don't tell me. Don't get upset over something like that. Don't be silly. She grabbed my cheek and pulled hard. Hey. Yes? Do you have a place to stay? Because I imagine you'll be very late when you decide to come back. I was planning on to stay in a hotel and... Perfect. In that case, come with me. I have something for you. She took my hand and started to run as I was dragged by her. Don't run so fast. Hold on a bit. It's just next door. Well, why did you bring me here? This is my home. Well, rather for now. For now? Yep, that's right. Because, she put her hand in her pocket, then her face turned pale. Wait, she nervously pulled out everything in her pockets. It's not here. Damn, again? She looked at me. <laughs> Hold on a second. Damn, Key, where did I put you? She crouched down and rummaged through her hole in the wall. Here it is. She held out her hand and offered me a key. It's my precious spare key. You'd better appreciate it. Uh-huh. But what are you supposed to be doing? Isn't it obvious, silly Saichi? I'm offering you to live here with me. And why? Oh, come on. Don't be a spoil sport and accept the generous offer. Are you asking me to move in with you? Exactly. Took you a while to catch on, eh? But I... But nothing. She turned and began to shake the door. Another time, another lock that turns against me. After kicking it, she opened the door. Come on in. Wait, so was Moroko the good guy all along? Was Moroko never actually trying to kill me in the first place? This time, I'll take good care of you. Not like the first time. Besides, you'll keep me company. But I... 
You don't have to worry. Come on, come on. Miroku finally invited me to... She forced me to live with her while I was looking for a job in the area. She said she wasn't just doing it to help me, but also so that she wouldn't feel so lonely. Since she arrived, she could not make any friends. Because of her eyes, everyone avoided her. Everyone but me, I guess. Because I know that she's more than a monster. She could be called an... Angel? So Roku was the good guy. Oh, I feel bad for getting you killed. Okay, so now we have another code. Yes, and this one? This one is Daniel. There we go. Allow me access. And we're back at the pool. Wow. How did you know that name? Did you know him? Or maybe that's your name. It's strange. Mika? Mika, 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 Mika. Mika! That's what I can see from here. Am I close or far from guessing? Am I far away or close to you? That poor Daniel character. He certainly didn't end well, of course. But what about you? Well, it was just curious that you reminded me of his name. But I have nothing more to say to you now. See you. I invoked the name of Daniel. She didn't appreciate. Okay, I'm going to go grab the code that she mentioned in the first one, right? Okay, I'm back. And now we have the code. And the code is 1125. There we go. That's right, yes? That's right. Oh, I see you there. Wow. Congratulations, Mika. Looks like you've come quite far. That's quite an achievement. Not only did you remember me, but you may also have known what I meant by that little riddle. Okay. Before I give you my little token of affection, let me ask you this. It's been a long time since we've spoken, hasn't it? Have you been well? How's the world out there? I wish I could see it with my own eyes, but it can't be possible. Yet. Well, here is my little present. It's something I could see. Maybe it will work for you. Maybe it won't. That's up to chance. Oh, and remember, that is not over yet. Okay. We have a QR code. Let's follow it. Interesting. Okay, so it brought me up to this YouTube video. An unlisted one, so yeah, this is the only way to find it. Unless you know the code, of course. Let's see what's on it. 30 seconds, okay. Interesting. I'm, my, okay, so we're in a forest. Kind of looks like a phone recording with this box here. So maybe this will be the setting for the next game. Maybe we're going... Oh, a castle, okay. Who knows? Maybe we're dealing with vampires in the next game. And we'll live in the castles and probably get eaten. Interesting. Okay. Ooh. And then we have this binary. Okay, so... Oh, you can't have comments, so... Yes. No one is allowed to translate for us. We can translate on our own. We can do this. And by us, I mean editor. Editor can do this for us. Are we ready? Okay, so now I've got the translation from our wonderful editor. And it goes as follows. Once again, congratulations for reaching this far. This time, I'll tell you that I see something from here. Yes, I see a girl with a sad look on her face. Maybe you can do something, but... I guess it's not the time yet. Dun dun dun. Oh, interesting. Okay, so clearly this is setting up for the next game, right? The girl with a sad look on her face. Delightful. Well, I hope you enjoyed that playthrough of Raiko. 
I was really not expecting to find out that Moroko was actually the good guy of Coco. I was full on expecting her to be the one that wanted to eat me, but apparently not. As always, if you want to check out the game, I'll leave the link in the description below. If you've enjoyed your time here, then please remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel. Other than that, have a spooky day and I'll catch you next time, guys.